Hello everyone. I'd like to thank you for joining us today for today's sermon from Praise Assembly of God here at 89 Congress Street. Hope you enjoy this message and if you have any feedback you'd like to offer feel free to give me a call at 207-364-3856 or my cell phone 207-357-4748. Again, enjoy today's message. Thanks. That granny or somebody had that nobody else was supposed to know. And I've worked with a lot of people, and this is what they say. Well, my alcoholism started when Granny, with her being the one who had the fruit jar, you know, out in the cabinet in the garage or something like that, or in the food pantry. Hey, guys, come on back in here. Come on, get, come on back in here. I want you guys to hear that. You guys are members of the church. Come on back in here. We don't, you guys don't need to leave. This is important. Did Tim go too? Let's get Tim back in here. We, we all, this is an important prophetic word. I want everybody to hear this. This isn't time to be leaving. Unless, and Chris has got the kids, so we don't need to, he's got them under control. So the, the, what I was saying was, is that someone that struggled with alcoholism from the 80s to the present would, would say, well, it started with Granny in her old fruit jar. It started with Grandpa, or it started with Dad, and when, uh, and that's where my alcoholism started because she was hiding it, and so, or she enjoyed it, and we all knew it, and so curiosity just killed the cat, and I started drinking at 10, 11 years old, and therefore picked up alcoholism into the um, into the present day. Well. Here, the prophetic word that God gave me this morning is, he said, Justin, what I want you to do is I want you to warn folks. I want you to warn folks about the danger of being the first generation or the second generation to be infatuated with the evils of Halloween. Now, they may understand how to keep it confined and controlled, but son or daughter, grandson or granddaughter may not. And at some point, someone's going to say, well, it started with Grandpa, it started with Mom, it started with Dad, and it carried down to me. Just like that old grandmother that had the fruit jar, where it started because Granny liked to have her hand in the till, or whatever the case may be, God is just warning us here not to be the generation that gives birth to an infatuation from your children and grandchildren, your nieces and nephews, to that of a holiday that is designated to worship the dead. Amen. Now today, I'm going to share with you a couple of lyrics from some songs of people, such as Michael Jackson. Marilyn Manson, who also wrote about Halloween in 2006. Michael Jackson, the largest selling album in history. And nothing's even close. Thriller. That's a song I grew up, knew every lyric to it. 1982. It's all over the music airways this week. Going to be looking at the things that we can do to give birth, and if we're not careful, we may survive the storm, but it gives birth to something far worse with our children and grandchildren. This past week, I've researched a lot of scriptures, and I've researched a lot of headlines and a lot of things, including our local paper with what's going on at our local Halloween walk. For all, I know some of you may have been there last night or Friday night or planning to go this weekend. But I will tell you, I'm warning you here. God will not be mocked. I know I said that two years ago. And not to say that's the reason why our sister Jane passed away. And I remember the warning, the prophetic word that God gave me was about gossip. I'll never forget it. The first week of January, 2000. And 14. So take a real serious thought about that. Last night I wasn't sure why God wanted me to open the altars, if you will, this morning for prayer. 
Now I'm glad I did. There's only been one other time I've been as nauseous as I am right now in preaching to you. And that was the day that I gave that prophetic warning. I would hate to think if we don't heed the word of God, what might happen to our children and grandchildren. My 23-year-old niece, let me get real personal with you. My 23-year-old niece, I think, is paying horrific dues by what she's got herself into and what she believes about the afterlife. Because of in the car, countless times, us talking about Thriller and listening to that song and listening to that beat and us talking about the difference about goblins and fantasy world and reality. I understood it. She did not. It gave birth to something that I believe she's paying for now. And I'll tell you, church, yesterday and this past week with my research that I found every one of them, safety warnings that the government and state list to people when they're talking to their kids about Halloween and trick-or-treating and ghosts and goblins and the, and the first one, explain to them fantasy versus reality. Well, right off the bat, that's very gray because it's a very fine line. My niece, she thought it was okay because Uncle Just, who even during his believing years, really the first four years or so, I was still listening to that. She thought it was okay because if Uncle Just listens to it, it must be all right. And she's 23 years old and all mixed up about reality and fantasy to the point of coming back. Uncle Just, you think I can come back as a snake? Do you think I can, can pray and ask for help from our, her great-grandmother, my grandmother? who was a very devout, devoted Christian. Very confused. But it gives birth. It gives birth to some things. So please, today, heed the warning of the Lord. Just in our local paper, just Wednesday, where it was advertising the haunted wall to be wicked scary, okay, I couldn't help but think of this young boy of what's happening or what could happen to his life by the, by, by the worshiping of the dead. You say, Pastor, what do you mean? Well, if you continue reading the article, you'll find where uh, it, it just came right, right out and said what was going to be there. Worshiping boxes of ghosts of Israel that are moving forth throughout. The haunted main where there's supposedly ghosts that live in the Mexico Rec Center and in the GRCC. And these ghost hunters are going around and they're putting boxes and they're throwing sand up in the air to let these demons go. And I'll tell you what, as bad as my week was this week, something, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, Lord, we don't need that. We don't need that. But as I was reading this article, it just came right out. It said, we want to make this the wickedest haunted walk ever. And then, if you, then, I, then I went on and I started to Google all the different things that were going to be taking place at this haunted walk. And the thing that I looked at, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing it right, because I heard a few different things on YouTube on how to pronounce it, but they can also view the Dibot box featured in that episode of a show, Haunted Maine. And what that is is a Jewish ghost and Jewish uh, things of the dead and mediums and spirits and all that kind of stuff you know, that you can watch this episode and you can see in this episode where this guy, he actually goes into his, his room, his bathroom, and he all this blue-like vomit like in the tub and his sink is shaking and, he, and his video uh, recorder's not working right and all this other stuff and the spirit of this and the spirit of that, the ghost of this, the ghost of that, right here is in our local Mexico rec center. And I've already been told the places were packed last night and Friday night. Well, this is a real serious thing. Let me just say this, I believe fully. The Lord may move or allow to move one of those demons and ghosts and 
all the things that we're going to talk about in Deuteronomy that Moses warns us of and that Jesus and, uh, and talks about in Ephesians 1 with his life, Paul talking to the church at Ephesus. One of those may jump into you. It's real stuff. Real stuff, church. You play with fire, you might get burned. And or you might mislead your child or grandchild or your niece or nephew like I did. And just for the record, the Holy Spirit was convicting me after getting saved too. So I've got to own up to that. There's no doubt. I've got to take ownership of the church. There's no doubt about it. That's why I'm pleading the blood and praying for my niece to be delivered. Because I gave birth to some of it. Even though I might have only been 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, I gave birth to it. Okay? So don't you think, don't you think that some things that are safe, your child is going to understand. I'd like to read you some lyrics, even from Thriller. It's close to midnight. Death's about to strike. It's a thriller, chiller night. Marilyn Manson, this Halloween lyric. Boys and girls of every age, wouldn't you like to see something strange? Come with us and you will see. This is our town on Halloween. This, this is Halloween. This is Halloween. Pumpkin scream in the dead of night. This is Halloween. Everybody's making a scene. Trick or treat until your neighbors are going to, going to die of fright. It is our town. Everybody scream. This is Halloween. I'm hiding under your bed. Teeth ground sharp and eyes glowing red. I am the one hiding under your stairs. Fingers like snakes and spiders in your hair. <laughs> Gary Underwood said this. I love scary movies. I like blood and gore. So, uh, another famous person, just by the single name of uh, Anidity, I'm not sure who that is, seems like Americans just want Halloween all year long. The, hollow, this, the holiday of Halloween just keeps getting stronger and more popular by the year. I'd like to read a couple of Halloween crime statistics from last year. On the day, and last year, Halloween fell on a Friday night. And in most large cities, hollow, uh, crime rate was up at least 13%. And of that, 21% was a destruction of property, 19% assault, 9% burglary, 1% sex crimes, and sex crimes uh, with a minor. And 32%, the largest, was theft. Just on Halloween itself. This is, a, this is a, the, the resource um, Hysteria Pure Fiction or Pure Fact. Halloween Hysteria is what um, the federal government is calling it and for businesses and for police forces to beware. Give you an idea of some Halloween stats from last year. This year it's estimated that 157 million Americans will celebrate Halloween this year. With 8 and 10 millennials, which are the age 2000 to 2015, saying that they're already planning something fun and dangerous to do with their friends. So if you have a millennial here, and some of you do, I do, 80% are already planning to do something fun and or dangerous with their friends. Think about that. Think about the prophetic warning of the Lord. Total spending in 2015 will top $6.9 million, billion dollars with a B, it's anticipated this year. With the average American now planning to, to spend $75 on decorations, candies, costumes, and more, which outside of gifts tops that of Christmas time. Top children's costumes, this is the age of 2000 and. 2007 to 2014, 
Is the princess costume, Batman character second place, action or other superhero third place, an animal or pet fourth place, and a frozen character fifth place. However, amongst teenagers, goth and or witch first place, an animal signified by blood in the face second place, Batman character third place, zombie character fourth place, and Star Wars character, fifth place. Just to let you know, Halloween started among the Celtic people in Western Europe. Halloween came over to this country in the 1860s. At first as a part of the harvest theme, and then it began, became very popular in the 1960s with candy, costume, and of course Scooby-Doo. And it has progressively been getting worse to where haunted houses are now common. Blood sacrifices are increasing. Other uh, cultic-like and goth-like events are happening in America like never before to where now the government, this is by CNN by the way, now where the federal government is warning parents to be on guard of what may happen this Halloween. Halloween is now second only to that at Christmas time. It's estimated that potentially by 2013, according to CNN, that Halloween will surpass Christmas when it comes to, except with the exception of gifts, when it comes to getting ready and decorating and preparing and all, and the amount of food spent and all that kind of stuff. Of course, the amount of food spent is far surpassed by the Super Bowl, which is also basically another secular event holiday that happens in America. Some that are actually looking to have the day after the Super Bowl as a federal holiday because so many people take off work that day anyway and miss school because of intoxication. The um, almost finished before we get into the Word of God. The average Halloween consumer spending has jumped more than $30 per family just since 2010. And the annual Halloween spending overall has jumped since 2010 from $5.6 billion to just under $8 billion, as I said earlier, in spending on Halloween as a country. Charisma Magazine did a very good article, Why Celebrating Halloween is Dangerous. Uh, which I printed that, which I thought was pretty cool, uh, of why Halloween is so dangerous. And these are the uh, very popular things that are increasing, that's no longer fantasy, but has become reality since the millennials. Listen to this. Becoming more popular, and people now believe, millennials believe, especially the teenagers, those that are older millennials, now believe it's possible to have sex with demons. It's now possible to have orgies between animals and humans, which is bestiality. It is now okay and possible for people to perform animal and human sacrifices to get what they wish. It's now okay to sacrifice the shedding of a baby because their blood is pure. It's now okay or deemed acceptable or deemed just the way it is, rape and molestation of teens because it's basically happened to many of them and adults, basically very common especially if they think it's by a, a demon or vampire. Okay, it's now deemed possible to actually believe, according to the survey that was done, and that's, that's here in the Charisma Magazine article, that, uh, that you can actually cast spells on people, or mediums on people. And then lastly, that you can release curses against the innocent and the ignorant of a community. So when you when you think about when you think about all this, I hope that you're getting the cotton out of your ears. Because this is a real thing. Think about it. People that threw the sand up in the air. You thought it was just a show? I guarantee you many of them believe that they're releasing the demon into this community. And millennials are buying into it. We have some millennials in here right now. And I believe that it is very well possible that that could happen. 
So I would encourage you to go to Charisma. It was in this month's edition, the October edition. And that's just to name a few for the sake of time. I'm going to stop there. And the dangers, the title of this message, The Danger of Halloween, America's Infatuation with Death. I wonder if I should put in parentheses or a, a dash there, the church's infatuation with death. You know what? We should be infatuated with death. And that's the death of Jesus Christ and getting up out of the grave. Do you know, church, that everything that's producing this infatuation in America, Jesus fulfilled with his life. He shed blood. What gory, what more gory of a scene do you need other than that of Jesus on the cross? And, and we talk about coming back to life. Jesus came back to life. What more do you need? Why do we need to be infatuated with demons and infatuated with the dark side and infatuated with goblins and goblins and vampires and all this other stuff that millennials are now defining as reality rather than fantasy? Why in the world do we need to be infatuated with that when we have the most ultimate event in history that was surrounded around death? Matter of fact, with communion, Paul says to proclaim his death until he comes. He doesn't say death and resurrection. He says proclaim his death. Wow. But we're, we're, we're on this like crazy. You know, we, uh, you know the, the amount of things that are, that are going on that people are being deceived. And for you that are, that are, that are born before 1980 or not even 1975 or so when the shift really began to change with Mike Merrill on Elm Street and Freddy Krueger and, uh, and uh, Jason and all those dudes that came out in the 80s, you know, that, 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 that those seeds that were planted 30 years ago they're producing a crop today. And it's millennials that are clueless. It is millennials that many of them who are buying into this stuff and are fatuated with it, you know, and are, and are so distraught, they can't even lift their sleeves. You guys know I love my niece like my own. She lives in Maryland. It's 100 degrees. She's walking around with long sleeve shirts. Let me tell you something. This stuff is real. And if you don't think it's going it, to, it, well, that's not going to happen. I'll teach. I'll educate. I'll, I'll, my child will understand. Let me tell you something. This is getting so rampant. It's moving so fast. You're going to be in yesterday's news, and your child or grandchild is going to be far out there. And here, we're going to find where Moses is warning us, and we're going to find where the only death that we need to be infatuated with, and it's okay to be infatuated with. It's okay to talk about the fact he shed his blood. It's okay that he's alive. Hallelujah. How many times does Jason have to come back alive? <laughs> and we're buying that stuff. And then, and then we sit down and we watch a movie and then somebody calls, Pastor, I didn't sleep too well. Why not? Because you, you filled your mind with that stuff or you've gotten confused. You know, or, or all this stuff just begins to produce torment at some point, especially when your issue or your habit or your control over the matter has jumped into someone else. You know, and then things get really graphic and horrific. And then, you know, again, it's not the beat of the music that God has a problem with. It's with the lyrics. It's with what they're saying. And those lyrics, you know, and those videos. I can't tell you how many times Lauren and I would, would watch Thriller. You know, we thought it was a cool video. The dance moves and all that, the beat and all that stuff. But it was the lyrics that stick in your mind. You know, and, and, it's, and it's huge. And I'm here to tell you, church, personally here to tell you, just because you raise, raise up a child in church, my niece is the one that led me to the cross. Just because they're there every Sunday and playing the part does not mean something else is going on in their mind and they're somewhere else when you're not watching. And they're believing it and they're putting, they're putting that into action. As I said this morning of the millennials, now only 60% of evangelical teenagers believe in the virgin birth, but they believe in a demon, or the, I should say they believe in, you know, in the vampires, and that they believe in blood sacrifices, and they believe in all those things that I shared before. But only 60% believe in the virgin birth? That means 40% doesn't. We've gone so far. We've gone so far from truth, and we're so, we're so mixed up. 
If you guys would be so kind as to stand with me for the reading of God's Word. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy 18, and we're going to look at verses 9 to 14 here this morning. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. When you come into the land which the Lord your God has given you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, a spiritualist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you will dis dispossess enlisted to soothsayers and to vineyards, but as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. If you will turn to Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1 and looking at verse 22, I'm sorry, verse 20 to 23, and I believe that's on the screen, yes it is. Okay, uh, Paul writing to the church at Ephesus, which he, Jesus, I'm sorry, he, he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of His Word. You may be seated. Churches, we're going to look at these verses very quickly here today. For I know it was a lot to share outside of the Word, just as far as some things going on with Hollywood, local as well as on national news. I pray here that we will listen to Moses' words who is speaking under the anointing of the Holy Spirit to avoid wicked customs, to avoid the things that are getting people in trouble left and right. If not, you or your loved one may also have to go through the fire and the pain. Who in the world would want that? Who in the world would want that? You know, who, who, who would want to, to go through that confusion? Who in the world would want to to want to patronize a place that's making money off of representing the dead. I wonder in that halted walk if there was a cross. I, wanted, I wonder if there's one who actually is alive, that who conquered the grave, that is not fictitious. I wonder if there's blood coming down from the cross to signify what Jesus did. My guess is there's not. One of the things that people are getting so caught up in Halloween is because it's deemed a non-religious holiday and everybody can buy into it. Kind of like Valentine's Day. Okay, at least in the minds of many Americans. Where even kids can have a good time. Well, church, let me just say this. It's like the credit card company that puts a little credit card in the cash register now. They know that little kid's going to grow up and be their, make their money for them. Like the cigarette companies back home in Maryland, which was tobacco country, you could buy candy cigarettes. They wanted to get them right away because they knew they'd get older and they'd want to go from that candy cigarette to the real deal. And it's the same thing here. Children. And if, and if children are misled and confused, now more than ever, as I read before, even little children wanting to dress up and more than something than just a witch, but they're wanting to go full-blown into a dead man, full-blown outfit, you know, a full-blown uh, desire to put some of that fantasy to reality. Well, I'm not going to elaborate uh, on these verses as far as I believe everyone here knows what they are. The end of verse number 10, I'm sorry, verse 10, there shall be... Not, there shall not be among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire, nor he who practices witchcraft, a soothsayer, one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer. You know, and, and that's, that's if you're sitting there, I don't want to get my palm read, or you're telling me my future, or, or cast a spell on me, and you think it's all just in fun. 
There's a lot of truth in the power of the tongue. You give them, the adversary does have power. He's trying to seek, kill, and destroy. You could very well be opening a can of worms that may cost a loved one not only their life, but maybe to become tormented. Also in here, and I didn't say it, but also in here, over 60% of those surveyed that now are the age of 15 or older, you know, that were in here, are were saying that the root problem of their mental illness was started with the festival of Halloween. When asked, what do you believe happened, or what do you believe they traced a lot of it back to something to do with Halloween? When I read that, I couldn't believe it, which is why the government's out here stressing, you know, make sure they understand the difference, make sure they understand this is not real, you know, so to speak. Well, what happens if it is? What happens if it is spiritual warfare? Are you not misleading? Are we not doing the same thing when we, we tell our kids all about Santa Claus and then the, the, did mommy lie to me? As I've said before, that happens every year in the 5th, 6th grade class. Did my parents lie to me? Some of you in here asked me that question when you were that age. Does that mean my parents were lying to me all these years? Misleading them. Well, what happens, church? What happens? And I believe it's very possible that, that, that there can be great danger, that there is such a fine line between fantasy and reality that perhaps both of it's reality. Perhaps both of it is spiritual warfare. And by just simply saying, oh, you have nothing to worry about, we're actually playing right into the, the adversary's hand that you very much have something to worry about. One of the things that are growing the fastest also among our millennials is self-mutilating or cutting, relieving pain, seeing blood, all those kinds of... We used to, back in my day, it was truth or dare. Those are long gone. There's actual things taking place. And if, and if this stuff wasn't real, why in the world would God tell Moses to tell the Hebrew people to avoid wicked customs? Why buy into that? Why? 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 Verse 11, or will he who conjures speckles or a medium or a spiritualist or one who calls up the dead? It broke my heart when my niece said, Uncle Just, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to talk to Mammal. That's as bad as with Hillary Clinton. She did the same thing when she was first lady. Wanting to talk to Eleanor Roosevelt to see how she went through the terrible years there with her husband Franklin Roosevelt. And she brought in a, a spiritualist to come in and to where she could actually talk to Eleanor Roosevelt's spirit. Remember that during, during the impeachment of President Clinton? It was a huge event when that was leaked that she actually brought someone in. But it broke my heart as I'm listening to this stuff. But it's, it's, it is what it is. It's very real. What Moses was dealing with 3,500 years ago, we're still dealing with today. King Solomon says there's nothing new under the sun. We buy right into this stuff. As a matter of fact, we're infatuated with it. The studies show that every trend is increasing. The studies show that, 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 more, that it could very well surpass Christmas. You know, it's, it's a huge event. And here, Moses is warning us. I should say the Lord is warning us through Moses. Calling up the dead. Remember, Ecclesiastes got that far where he was calling up the dead. He was so far gone from the Lord. Remember that Ecclesiastes class? Calling up the dead. If we're sitting there listening to lyrics and we're buying records, not records, what am I saying? We're buying CDs or we're buying something online on our iPad or whatever, we're basically buying into it ourselves. Verse 12, for all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. Abomination means a hatred. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out before you. It's such a hatred. It's the Lord that's revealing these things today to you. It is the Lord. People say, Pastor, I don't want to hear this stuff in church. Let me tell you something. It is the Lord revealing to you how dark things are out here. Right. Yes. Right. And if, if he doesn't warn you, God's got a problem. If we think we can all just leave here singing kumbaya and we can get on a little makeup and we can all have a, a good old time and we can patronize a place without that stuff impacting us in one way or another or someone else that we love, we are sadly mistaken. And everybody here can say, I was warned. I don't want you to have a 23-year-old niece and a 2-year-old great niece, you know, who's, who's troubled by this stuff. I don't want to see you going through what I'm going through. And here it's a clear warning. The Lord is driving it out before you. And in verse 13, this is the bottom line, believers. 
This is the bottom line. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. Blameless meaning avoid the appearance of evil. You're not even going to be attached to it. You are blameless before the Lord. You don't even want to get close to it. You don't even want to put yourself in a dangerous position for you to be the next person, just like the granny who had the old fruit jar out in the garage cabinet that she didn't think nobody knew was out there. Or maybe she did, she didn't care, or whatever the case may be. And say, so, you know what? Well, it actually started over here. If you're here and you're thinking, yeah, Pastor, that's me. I, I'm, I'm afraid I've done that. Well, you know what? There's power at the cross. There's room at the cross. And there's nothing like stopping today. There's nothing like stopping today. Don't continue to go forth. It's kind of like if you're driving down the road and you, you're driving and you see a sign that says dangerous curve and you just keep rolling 50 miles an hour you go over the curve. And don't expect there to be a guardrail. I was down on the Greenwood Road not too long ago, not too far from where Crystal lives, and there's a dangerous curve. Mary and I were taking the scenic route. We were going over to Norway, and it was a beautiful day, and we were just cutting over that way. And there's a dangerous curve. You would, you would think there'd be a guardrail there, but there's not. Like, there's got to be people going into this lake all the time, especially in the wintertime. There was a sign up, though, that said dangerous curve. What did I do? I hit the brake. And you slow down coming across. I mean, it's, that thing comes almost 180 degrees. Semi-circle math class, right, Lex, Nathan, 180 degrees, semi-circle. You know, we almost went 180 degrees, but it's a dangerous curve. But if I just kept rolling, I might have ended up in Greenwood Lake or whatever that lake is there. South Pond. South Pond. Yeah, it's a dangerous spot, you know. But here, it's, it's a warning. Let off the gas, church. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. I mean, this is, this is so, so important here. To understand why get caught up, and what what they were getting caught up in was the gods of the the Canaanites, They're getting caught up in their life, you know, getting caught up in all was you know as they were in the wilderness in Sinai, they they were they were getting caught up in that stuff, and the, and all the sorcery and the witchcraft and everything that we shouldn't even touch with a ten foot pole. And verse fourteen, for these nations which you will dispossess. Listen to soothsayers and diviniers. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed you such for you. The land would, of course, be the Canaan. You know, the land that you would take over. They're listening to all that stuff. Fortune tellers and everything like that. You don't listen to it. You listen to me. Some of you here may play your horoscope. And live life based on that. You may put money and have your palm read. Or you may call a 900 number. And all that other stuff. But God says, I haven't appointed that for you. I don't want you to touch that. I want you to come to me. Which leads us to Ephesians 1 as we look there quickly here this morning. The only life and death that we should be infatuated with is that of Jesus Christ. Amen. Church, why in the world do we want anything close to that? Oh, pastor, just for a little fun. Church, we're playing right into the enemy's hand. We're playing right into his hand and we, we think it's all right. We think it's not going to impact us. Well, I've got to let my guard down. It's a, it's a good time. You know, Pastor, even you like orange and black. Yeah, because it's the colors of the Orioles. It has nothing to do with Halloween. It has nothing to do with, with wanting to be incognito as a supporter of Halloween. You'll see me wearing orange and black year-round. Just because of, my, because of the two colors, primarily orange. Actually, I don't wear that much black and orange. When I have orange, well, typically I have blue oil. But church here, it's, as, as we look at this, this is what Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus. And if you know the church of Ephesus, they had fallen prey to many worldly things. They would lose their first love. There was a lot of culture shock that was going on. There was a lot of idolatry that was taking place. Last night at prayer meeting, we had prayer over idolatry. You know, that we would begin to make Jesus Christ our Lord and not something else. And not a, a video game or a cell phone game. But that we would be coming in ready to worship and praise the Lord. And this is what Paul writes. Which he worked in Christ. The Father worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. 
And this is talking about the workmanship of the Father through Jesus Christ and the power of His resurrection and to know only the Lord and the only God that you need to be infatuated with is that of Jesus Christ. Amen. Why do we need anything else? Why do we need it? We don't, church. We, we certainly don't, but our young people, our adults even, and Halloween is so big now, now the younger seniors, those in their early 60s, the baby boom generation, they were buying into some of this because they were the teenagers when it kicked off back in the 1960s. All right, so it's almost come full circle in America. With the exception of the builders, there's only a few of them left, praise the Lord for them, greatest generation. They're the only ones that can remember a culture prior to the rise in Halloween and spirits and people actually believing in it over the past 60 some years. But the only death that we need to be infatuated with is Jesus Christ. Amen. And that he is alive and that God the Father raised him from the dead. Don't sit there and, and, and to fall into this stuff that's, that's, well, Pastor, what do you think of reincarnation? What do you think? Can I come back? I'm thinking to myself, what is wrong? Sometimes I asked, I think it was Tracy this week, was my microphone on last week? Was I speaking English? You know, and, and sometimes people are, are so wrapped up in it because the, because the adversary gets their mind and curiosity begins to move. Which is why Moses tells us, don't touch it. So you cannot be misled. Amen. Be infatuated. Paul was telling the church at Ephesus, be infatuated with the death of Christ. Be infatuated with His resurrection. Be infatuated that He is literally sitting at the right hand of the Father, waiting for the Father to say, Son, go get my children. Amen. And I don't want to be listening to some junk that's talking about some spirit or some holiday that's not even a holiday. Holiday, by definition, means holy day. And some day that's talking about the dead and, and the dead moving forth and goblins and all that other stuff going around. You know, and pumpkins that light up, you know, and all this other stuff. I mean, think about that. Spiders in your hair? Come on, church. I mean, it... People get freaked out, but that's the whole point of it. The adversary wanting people to get freaked out. Wanting people to get caught up in, in everything. Wanting people to drink someone else's blood. Wanting people to think they can have sex with an animal. Wanting people to, you know, go out and commit a sacrifice of some kind. All falling prey to the adversary. Verse 21, far above all principality. I love this, church. All authority. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion. In every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. What Paul is saying here is there is nothing that can compare to the death of Jesus Christ in his resurrection. What he's saying here, that yep, each generation is going to try to outdo the previous one. But they will not touch the infatuation of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Verse 22, and he, the Father, put all things under his, Jesus' feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the head. He's the commander in chief. He's the one in which we should be infatuated with. Chasing after. You say, Pastor, well, isn't it okay to have a little fun? Isn't it okay? No, not really. You're playing with fire. That would be like if your little kid said, well, Dad, traffic's really been light today. Isn't it okay that I play out here? The ground is softer and we want to play football. You would be crazy to say, oh, okay, that's, yeah, traffic is let down today. Yes, it is softer here, so you can play right here. The next thing you know, you hear somebody scream because your little kid just been hit. That doesn't make any sense. doesn't make any sense to us, but that's what we buy into. That's what we believe. That's what we think is true. Well, here, we, we need to put all things under his feet, the goblins and the demons and all that stuff, and say, Jesus, you took all that on the cross, and that's what I'm infatuated with. You want to be infatuated with the Spirit? Get infatuated with the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's going to be a lot more adventurous and a lot more fun than anything that you can see at Halloween time. 
Wow. And church, why in the world would you want anything that's counterfeit in the first place? What can a counterfeit bill do? Nothing. If you get caught, you're in trouble with it. If you, if you didn't know it was counterfeit, but you thought it was real, and you go up to buy that pizza, you hand the lady a $20 bill, and she says to you, this isn't real. You've got a problem. Church, why are we so busy studying the counterfeit when all we need to do is study the real deal? Which is Jesus Christ. And Halloween is just taking off. Now there are stores that are open year-round. Parties that are planned. As I said, 80% of millennials are already planning to do something fun and dangerous this Halloween. Wow. Think about that. Think about that parents that got a millennial. Do you have anything planned? Just because they look sweet and innocent don't mean everything's all right. I can tell you that firsthand. Anybody can play the part. Anybody can play the part, but then cruise on into a place, download something, look into something, say you're going here, but you're actually over there. Guess what? God sees the whole thing. And this I, this I guarantee is going to start happening too where, where some parents are going to develop strong convictions and other parents are going to say one thing or another and that's going to cause some strife because I don't want you going to that parent's house if they're listening to that. Or I don't want, no, you can't go here. You can't go, oh, it's just a kid's haunted house. It's real friendly. And then I get called. And the two parents are upset with each other. How did I get into it? Well, people have two different convictions. What does Satan try to do? He tries to bring division. And that's how he works. And lastly, verse 23, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Jesus and his body. Jesus and his fullness fulfilled everything on the cross. Everything that you could say that you're infatuated with about Halloween, I can flip the coin and compare it to the cross. Say, Pastor, that, 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 that costume, though, was just so scary. I was into it. What could be more scary than how Jesus looked on the cross as he was dying? He wasn't even recognizable. Blood everywhere, scar, crown of thorns on his head, bleeding profusely. Left up there alone. What's more scarier than that? What's more, uh, when I think of the movie The Passion of the Christ, that was a pretty scary movie, in my opinion. And if that was a real authentic, and it was 98% authentic, it would have been X-rated because it would have been, there's a sexual component to a Roman crucifixion. The man was tortured, and, and what a scary picture. Why don't you keep that in your mind this week? You don't need to go to a haunted house to see scary. All you got to do is read uh, Matthew 27 and get the bottom line. In Matthew 26, as Jesus was being tortured. Or Mark 15, Luke 23, John 20. All you have to do, you don't have to go far to get that scary fix. You don't have to go far to... To talk about the Spirit of God raising him from the dead. Why would that infatuate you? If it's the theme, if it's the principle, the cross satisfies it. Why do you need this other stuff? Well, Pastor, I enjoy the candy. Well, then go get you a pack of Twizzlers and sit down and read. <laughs> Think about it, church. Think about it. The bottom line is, it's the curiosity and it's the fleshly, and it's the evil that you're drawn to. Just come out and say it. God knows your heart anyway. And one thing that we're seeing is revelation of truth. We're seeing God reveal the inside of people's hearts. Just come out and admit it. I like the evil piece. Okay, well then, you're warned. Bottom line. There's no other way I can say it. It could be costly to you, or it could be costly to one of your loved ones. I pray it's going to start with you. I pray it's going to end with you. That's right. Amen. That's right. There was ever a time I've been so concerned about this congregation, it's right now. There was ever a time we needed to pack a place out praying, it's now. Praying for one another. 
there's ever been a time I'm so concerned about my own family. It is now. So, a lot of heaviness. A lot of heaviness. Well, I'm just going to have a good time to relieve the stress. Rather than putting water on the fire, you may be putting gasoline. Yeah. And rather than relieving stress so that you can live longer with a good life, you may be hurrying up yeah. the end of your life. Or someone else you know and love. Real here today, Jim. Wives to the point of almost being nauseous earlier. Feeling better now, praise the Lord. But I can only pray. I can only pray that you will choose wisely. I will only pray that you will represent truth and be found blameless in the eyes of the Lord. We'll find out. The truth be told. We're going to find out. And I will tell you that even if you made mistakes in the past like I did, God will be there to comfort you, will be there to help you, and I believe God can do miracles, and I believe He can deliver my niece. Amen. I believe. I believe. I have to. If not, the guilt's going to overwhelm me. The spirit of condemnation is going to destroy me. It already hurts enough. I've got to go to the cross. I've got to go to Jesus. I've got to ask Him to bring me out of this mess. But certainly the thing I can do is get rid of the thriller. Right. The thing I can do is, is come out and take responsibility. I was wrong. Trying to fix it. And God leads and God, but you have to do the miracle. You have to do the miracle. So whatever place you're in here today, I pray that God is speaking to your heart. I pray that, that God will penetrate the depths of your soul while there's still time Amen. and before it's too late. Father, thank you for your word here today. Lord, a different kind of message, a personal message, a warning. Lord God, we understand, you understand. Hello. Thanks for watching today's message. Appreciate you taking the time to listen to each word of God as shared here today. I'd also like to take this time to invite you to our weekly services. Sunday school for all ages at 9 a.m. Worship at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. with Children's Church at 10 a.m. Also, we have a special men's and women's group at 5 p.m. on Sundays. During the week, we have several services as well. We have an extra innings class with me, Pastor Justin, on Tuesdays at 10. Uh, also, uh, Tuesday nights at 7 p.m., we have a special class on Israel and the Book of Acts. Wednesday, we have a love and respect class for married couples at 10 a.m. Also, on Wednesday night, we have our family night for all ages at 6.30 p.m. And lastly, we have our food pantry on Thursdays with servings at both 10 and 11 a.m. May God richly bless you today. Thanks again for watching.